Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about legal problem 289, Game of Life. Let's take a look at the problem first. According to Wikipedia article, the Game of Life, also known as Life, is a cellular automation device by a British mathematician, John. Given a board with n by n cells, each cell has an initial state, either life or dead. One means life, zero means dead. Each cell interacts with It's eight neighbors. Remember, it's eight. It's not four directions as we usually see in deep code problems. So it's horizontal, vertical, and diagonal. Using the four following rules: any live cell with fewer than two live neighbor dies. Second rule: any live cell with two or three live neighbors lives until the next generation. Third rule: any live row with more than three live neighbors die. And the final rule. Any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell, as if by reproduction. So now it's asking us to write a function to compute the next state after one update of the board given its current state. The next state is created by applying the above rules, the above four rules, simultaneously to every cell in the current state. Where birth and death occur simultaneously. So one of the tricky part of this problem is that you cannot apply the cells accumulatively, meaning you can apply the update to one specific cell at this time and then use that updated cell to update its neighbors or to update the rest of the board. That's just beating the purpose of this problem. So. A straightforward way would be we can initialize an extra 2D array to be a temporary board, so that we can hold all of the newly calculated cell values to the new board, while we can continue to iterate on the current, the given board in the current states. Meaning we can keep the current board, all of the values in the current board, to be as it is until we finish traversing the entire board while obeying to these four rules. That's the most straightforward solution. Then how we can implement That. What we can do is that we can go through this entire 2D array. Say this is n by n cells, so we're going to initialize an extra 2D array exactly the same size, n by n. That's going to be the temporary copy board, which is going to hold all of the final calculated value into this. Temporary board. Another thing to make this solution accepted is that you want to assign all of the temporary board into the final, into the given input. That's what they will be checking in the lead code. How can we implement this? So first, we want to understand how we can go through all of its eight neighbors within a 2D array. Suppose this is the one cell that we're looking at. It is at zero zero, and we'll find all of its eight neighbors. How can we denote its eight neighbors in this 2D array? So first, we'll find its top one. That means its array is minus one, right? So this index of the element, the cell on top of it, is going to be row. It's going to be the row index de decremented by one. So it's minus one zero. Column index doesn't change. This is its top neighbor. Then its next neighbor, we go clockwise. It's going to be minus one and one. So the row is the same as this one, but the column index is going to be incremented by one. The same go clockwise will be here. This one. Now this row index is incremented by one if we go from here, but the column index doesn't change. We go the same way. Row index incremented by one. Column index doesn't change. Here, one zero, and then one minus one, right? One minus one, which we get it from here. The column index needs to be decremented by one. Next, we have zero minus one, which is zero minus one. Row index needs to be decremented by one, and then the last one that we have is minus one minus one in comparison to this one. So these are the eight total neighbors that we need to go through. Now we can put this idea into the actual code. So first, we're going to use two variables: board length, since we'll we'll be using this many times.、Um, M basically is the height, and n is the width. So I'm just going to use a one-character variable to simplify this to speed up my typing. Next, we'll initialize a temporary array. We'll just call it next. New int size is m and n. Remember, at this moment, everything we initialize to is going to be zero. So by default, now the next this board. The next board is zero. Everything is filled with zero at this moment. So next, what we will do is 
we will have a 2D array. We'll just call it directions to, to help us hold all of this. New int here. Let's see what do we have. So here is all of the all of the eight directions that we just went through. So these are the let's go start from mi minus one zero. So minus one zero. Then next minus one one. Minus one one. Minus one minus one. We basically copied this, all of these eight neighbors coordinates into the actual code. So all of these eight neighbors, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all of these eight neighbors that we're going to traverse through for every single cell that we're going to visit. So now we'll just iterate through every single cell in the, give, in the given board. I is smaller than M, I plus plus. Now we do if int we have another variable, j minus n, j plus plus. Next, what we will do is that we will, will have another one, live count, because we want to keep track of how many live cells that we do have for the current cell that we are iterating on. So we always will initialize a new variable for the current cell. And then we'll go through all of its eight neighbors Directions. This one needs to be a. Uh, now we'll go through every single one. So, for every for all of its eight neighbors, we're going to use x and y to be its coordinates. So it's going to be uh, the first one is going to be x coordinate plus i. This is pretty much a template code. Um, simple way to calculate the cell denoted by i and j. So if we want to make sure that i and j are meaningful, which means they are still within the board, if they are out of the boundary, or if it's, or if this cell is not a live cell, we don't even need to count it, right? So if x is greater than or equal to 0, and x smaller than m, it needs to be within the boundary of the height and y is greater than or equal to zero and y is smaller than n which is the width of the board and board x and y needs to be a live cell only in this case what we will do is we'll increment live count by one at this point after we go through all of these eight neighbors this form is this and then we can check what we need to do. We need to follow all of these four rules. The first, let's go the dead cell first. So if board i j equals it is dead, that is very straightforward because there is only one rule. With exactly three neighbors becomes a live cell. So if live count equals to three, then next i and j becomes a live one. Remember, again, when we initialize this next temporary board, everything is default to be zero. That's how Java works. I believe in most other languages too. So then in the other case, else if board i and j, it is a live one. So there are three rules that we need to consider. So the first one is, any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies. So dies, that means it's going to be next i and next i and j is going to be zero, which means we can safely ignore in this case, right? Because by default, when we initialize this one, next i and j is already zero. So we can just ignore this one. So let's take a look at rule number two. Any live cell with two or three live neighbors lives onto the next generation. That means we need to take care of this because next i and j needs to be one. So let's see how we can do this. If live cell with two or three live neighbors, that means count lives equals to two or count lives equals to three. In either cases, we should keep this one alive. 
we should keep this one alive. That means we change the next from the default value 0 to 1. That's what it means. Now let's take a look at the rule 3. Any cell that with more than three live neighbors will die. Okay, we don't need to worry about that because default one next i and j is zero. That's it. Then we're done with all of the four rules. Now at the end, what we need to do is that we need to copy over all of the values that we calculated for the next state for each cell from the next board into the current board because that's how this problem on Leetcode is going to check your is going to validate your, your result. Now let's do that. You can just quickly copy this. Copy this last last for loop. Now we'll do what we'll do is we'll assign every the value in every cell in next board into board. That's it. This is the entire algorithm. Now let's hit submit and see. Hmm, we got this cannot find symbol. Okay, this is I don't know what I have in my mind, completely wrong variable name. Okay, let me hit submit again. All right, it's accepted. Uh, faster than 100%, crazy. Uh, this is the idea of the most straightforward solution or the algorithm to solve this problem game of life. Of course, there are even more optimized solutions because in this problem, the time complexity of this algorithm is OM times N because we have to visit every single cell but that's not the thing that we can optimize because in any algorithm for this problem, we need to visit every single cell. So the time complexity, the lower bound of this time complexity is guaranteed to be O M times N. But the space complexity of this problem is something that can be improved, which is O M by N in this case, because we have initialized a completely the same size of temporary board in the array. Right. This is something that can be optimized, but that's beyond the scope of this video. In this video, I just want to talk about the most straightforward solution to this problem to give people some idea of how this works. Basically, a few problems you need to overcome in your mind, which is all of the states change simultaneously. You cannot calculate each cell at one time and then use the updated cell value to calculate the next cell. And then a second one is that how do you go through all of its eight neighbors? There are multiple ways. This is one easy way to do that. The third one is that you want to assign all of the values that you calculated from the temporary board into the given input board to make sure that your answer is correct. If you have any questions, comments, please drop me down in the comment section below. And if you find this video helpful, please do me a favor and hit the like button. I'm going to appreciate it a lot and that's going to help, help a lot with the YouTube algorithm as well. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel as we continue go, to go through a lot of interesting lead code and, and interview problems. That's it for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one.